Hi, so in this session I'm just discussing about the organization of eukaryotic DNA. We know that uh, in the case of eukaryotes, the DNA is quite long, especially if you take an example of human beings. The DNA of a uh, human being as such measures around 2 billion, uh, 2 billion nanometers in length, whereas it gets accommodated within a microscopic nucleus, which measures around 2000 to 6000 nanometers in diameter. So we can see the way in which it gets compactly arranged or compactly packed within a small microscopic nucleus. So to just explore the various levels through which it undergoes to attain such a packing ratio, uh, we'll discuss about something about chromosomes and chromatin. What are they? In the case of eukaryotes, uh, the DNA is present along with some basic proteins in the form of chromosomes within the nucleus. and uh, so chromatin is nothing but a small fragment or a unit of analysis of a chromosome and gives a general idea of the nature of the chromosome. That means if we take a chromosome as a whole, say suppose we take a chromosome, a small fragment of it is nothing but chromatin and uh, it gives an analysis, uh, it is a unit of analysis and gives an entire idea about the entire chromosome. Now, to understand the various organizational levels within the eukaryotic DNA, we should first understand what is packing ratio. So, to understand what is packing ratio, let us first go to the definition. So, suppose this is the initial DNA, which measures, say, x nanometers in length. And this is the final DNA or uh, the final length into which it gets compactly arranged. And say suppose it measures y nanometers in length. Now the ra packing ratio is nothing but the ratio of x with y. So as the definition goes, the packing ratio is the, uh, the ratio obtained when the length of the DNA is divided by the length into which it is packaged. So the length, initial length divided by the length into which it is packaged is nothing but the packing ratio. Now moving to the next slide. Now uh, as I said in uh, chromosomes the DNA is compactly arranged along with certain positive proteins or basic proteins which are known as histones. Now these histones, they are positively charged basic proteins, they are of five major types and contain amino acid residues like lysine and arginine and uh, these lysine and arginine are the basic amino acid residues and the five major types of histones are H1, H2A, H3, H4 and H2P. Now moving to the next slide which tells about the formation of nucleosome. Now formation of nucleosome is the very first level of organization. And uh, it is uh, formed by wrapping of the DNA around the histone octamer. Octamer means eight molecules. So eight molecules of histones combine together to form histone octamer and acts like a code. And the DNA gets wrapped around this octamer. So how does it look like? Eight molecules, say, Eight molecules are present. And the DNA, this, this is the front end, that is, these four molecules are seen towards the front end. And similarly, uh, the four molecules are uh, seen in the back end. And the DNA is wrapped around it. It makes one full turn. And then in another turn, it takes a three fourth of turn around the histone octamer and forms a nucleosome. So histones plus DNA together forms the nucleosome. And nucleosome is a fundamental unit of chromatin. Now, histone octamer acts like a core and consists of two copies of each of these histone proteins. That is, it contains two copies of H2A, 2B, 3 and H4. Now, the duplex DNA, which is wrapped around the histone octamer, is approximately 147 base pairs in length. This is a small basic unit, and is, this small basic unit is termed as a nucleosome. 
nucleosomes together with DNA appear like beads on a string. At this stage, the DNA is 10 nanometers in diameter and attains a packing ratio of 6. So, at this stage, it appears like a necklace, like beads on a string. And we can see that here, from a linear uh, DNA molecule, it has changed into a beads on a string model, wherein it has attained a packing ratio of 6. So, it has got compacted to one particular organizational level. Now, moving to the next organizational level, that is a formation. Uh, uh, before that, let me just give the structure of a single nucleosome, how it looks like. Uh, this, this is the histone of the mud. We can see eight molecules, respectively. These are the eight molecules, and the DNA is wrapped around it. It takes one full turn, and in the another round, it takes three fourths of the turn. And uh, these are the uh, H1 histones, that is, you can say that it is a linker histone. It helps in um, uh, it helps in the further stages of organization, further levels of organization, or it, uh, it gives stability to the DNA structure. And uh, this is the linker DNA, that is, the DNA which is joined between the nucleosomes is called as a linker DNA. Uh, I'll be explaining about them in detail in the further slide. Sorry, moving to the next slide. Now here, uh, role of histone 1. Now it holds a DNA which is wrapped around the nucleosomes in a proper position. And the linker DNA is made up of approximately 20 to 60 base pairs. And the H1, H1 histone H1 binds to the linker DNA. This gives stability to the zigzag 30 nanometers chromatin fiber. This 30 nanometers chromatin fiber is nothing but the next organizational level. And this uh, next organization level and this H1 gives stability to this next uh, organizational level that is solenoid fiber or 30 nanometers chromatin fiber. Now, the formation of chromatin fiber or the solenoid fiber, which comes as a second stage of organization. Now, from the beads on the string stage, the DNA, uh, uh, DNA coils in such a way that at least six nucleosomes are packed per coil. So, in the next stage, at least six nucleosomes get packed per coil. In this stage, DNA attains a diameter of 30 nanometer, and this level of organization is known as a 30 nanometer fiber or solenoid fiber. When the chromatin is extracted from isotonic buffers, it appears like a 30 nanometer fiber. At this stage, it attains a packing ratio of 10. This stage is seen during the interphase in cell cycle. So, this 30 nanometer fiber is generally seen during the interphase uh, stage of the cell cycle and um, it, it is something like this with at least 6 nucleosomes per coil are arranged and then it, it, it goes for the next coil. So, this is a 30 nanometer stage. Uh, uh, wherein it, uh, it attains a packing ratio of uh, 10 and, uh, and it attains a diameter of 30 nanometers. And this, is sta this stage is seen during the interphase of the cell cycle. Now moving to the next slide, stages after the solenoid fiber. So what happens after the solenoid fiber? Now, after the solenoid fiber, So after this, uh, after this stage, so suppose this is a nuclear matrix, the DNA forms loops and scaffolds around the protein matrix. And then in the next stage, it forms mini band. Let us say this is a nuclear matrix. forms a mini band with large, huge number of intricately arranged loops. Now, such a sort of mini bands are arranged in a chromosome. Millions of such mini bands are present in each fragment of chromosome. 
So stages after the solenoid fiber. Later, the solenoid fiber gets further coiled and condensed and is organized into loops, scaffolds, and domains to obtain cytologically visible threads known as chromatids. The looping is such that the base of loop is attached to the same protein skeletal work. Some metallic ions like calcium and copper, along with non-histone proteins, help in the looping process. This increases the packing ratio to about 1000 in interphase chromosomes and to about 10,000 in mitotic chromosomes. We very well know that when the cell enters into the mitosis, the uh, chromosomes get very intensely and condensed, uh, condensedly packaged. So at that highly condensed stage, they attain a packing ratio of about 10,000. Whereas when they are in the interface stage, that is a preparatory, preparatory stage to the cell division, they are loosely coiled. The DNA is loosely coiled. So at this stage, we can see finally that from a packing ratio of 6 in the beads on a string stage, it has come to a packing ratio of 10,000 during mitosis. So such high is the level of condensation in the case of eukaryotic DNA. Now uh, coming uh, levels of organization, a pictorial representation of levels of organization of DNA. Let me just zoom it a little bit so that it's more clear. Now this is a DNA double helix. We can see it's a linear molecule which is 2 nanometers in diameter. And the next stage is the beads on a string stage wherein the first level that is uh, wherein the nucleosome is formed. So histone octamer around which the DNA gets wrapped and it forms a necklace-like uh, structure which has a, a packing ratio of 10, sorry, packing ratio of 6 and diameter comes to about uh, approximately to 10. The next level is the solenoid fiber or 30 nanometers chromatin fiber wherein at least 6 nucleosomes get packaged in each coil and uh, this is how each coil uh, appears and it attains a diameter of 30 nanometers. The next stage is the um, stage where it, wherein it forms number of loops around the matrix and here it uh, approximately obtains a diameter of, um, uh, it, it attains a packing ratio of approximately 680. So the packing ratio has increased a lot enormously from 10 to 680 and then comes the mini band stage where number of loops are found, uh, formed around the center um, nuclear matrix. And uh, here we can see the packing ratio has increased to 1.2 into 10 to the power 4. And then the next stage is the uh, chromosome stage. Uh, so each, each fragment of a, a chromosome contains number millions of such mini bands compactly arranged one above another. So here we can see how uh, the uh, chromosomes or how the DNA gets compactly uh, packed within the chromosome and how it gets further condensed during the mitosis. So these are the various levels of organization uh, within the eukaryotic uh, DNA. And uh, histones are the basic proteins which help these, uh, help the DNA to get organized or to get compactly arranged and move to the next levels of organization.